share. With you being born in the early 30s, part of your childhood memory may remember the Depression? We walked, we followed a little bit of the Depression. We were coming out of the Depression, I think. Well, and What do you remember about the Depression years? How did your family fix the food? The Depression, I remember the Depression a little bit uh, about uh, Dad used to go hunting deer and we always used to have a hind quarter of deer meat hanging in the back porch. And Mother would get the deer meat and cut the black and blue, the dying part off to get to the fresh meat. We never died, but uh, we cooked that and and I'm just, we took a ride today over to Cedar there, and I says, see that lake guy to my son? I says, they used to go out there shooting rabbits, and we used to bring the rabbits home and eating rabbits. So that was roughly just after the Depression, we used to go shooting rabbits out there. Dad used to clean the outhouse and put that fertilizer to fertilize the, <laughs> the garden. And so that was, uh, he would be there, and, oh, then we had, uh, the Clark's uh, cows come down across the way there, and and the Clark's cows, and we were supposed to get a car, a cow for our gra for the woodshed, and, and my brother built an, a stable for the the cow, <laughs> and then he lit a bonfire to keep the cow warm, and he burnt the cow dog shed down. <laughs> the, the war years, we had uh, we had uh, blinds we put up in the windows, and we have. Blackout drivers with little slits on your headlights and things like that. We had first aid stations. Uh, our house was a first aid station. Dad was the head first aid man, I guess you would call him or something like that. And then that was first aid, and then we had that. We had mock up uh, accidents. People have bandages just like they do today. So never we had simulated war conditions, and then people would be bringing into the first aid station. They have little tags that are. Uh, they didn't have blood like they show nowadays, but they had his arm is broken. The guy would have to put a splint in there and put it on, and then, and then, then we have the uh, then at the same time we had the uh, Lancaster airplane would come over and they would and they'd be head chopping over the over the trees and down in the harbor and away they'd go back down to Pat Base. We went swimming one day and the uh, military police went down and. They were asking questions, and they said, did you see any soldiers? And I said, we said, no, no. And they left, and then about an hour later, about three soldiers came in, walking the beach, and they went away. And then the police, the provost, that's what they called them, they came back, and they said, uh, <coughs> did you see them when they went down that way? Yeah, they went down that They were deserters yeah. from the army camp in the Nine. Uh, we did have army uh, convoys going through. Yeah. That, 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 that's understandable. The convoys would go through. We I don't remember the, any of them stopping at any time. I'll tell you the truth. It, it really didn't bother me because it, it was just part of the, in, the, the environment, environment yeah. at that time. I remember the special uh, nights. Yeah, we went to nights quite a bit. What we would get in there. Oh, yeah, Rosen's Hardware Store. We used to get barber bark in the wartime. Get what? Barber bark. You don't know what cascara bark is? Never. It's an Indian, it's an Indian herb of the Indians discovered on the coast. And then when you took it, you went to the bathroom, baby. <laughs> and we used to go and strip the trees. It's a barber bark or cascara tree. Take the bark off. And in fact, to tell you, Today, I um, keep on the story, the barber bark, and we'd strip it, and we put it on the roof of the house to dry it. And when we dried it all and got the moisture out of it, we'd sack it and take it to Rolson's. And then they would put it in, this is a wartime. Yeah. This is where we were helping. we get something like five cents a pound. Hmm. And then they would use it to get the, make a, a medicine for the, the armed forces. Huh? It was just the same as, uh, when they were having set lines for uh, dogfish for the Cod Liver Oil. Set lines for codfish? Oh, the set lines are miles out in the harbor for dogfish. For codfish, or for the liver, for the wartime. So who was doing that? Anybody wanted to do it. 
So you just take your boat out there and set lines out with bait and... Yeah, you well, they did a little bigger than that, but they, they, they was, that's what they did, the cod, for the cod, for uh, cod liver oil, not the codfish, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. the dogfish, Shark, yeah. dogfish. Yeah. But the uh, Cascara Bar, Rolson's, anyway, Rolson's used to be my favorite hardware store, I eat five cents a pound. <laughs> I worked for him too. Everybody worked for Comox. What'd you do for Comox? Well, we first we started uh, in Comox. We started as powder monkeys, and we carried dynamite to blast roads open. And we did a lot of blasting. And I was a packer. I used to pack dynamite from the checkout point. And I would drop dynamite up all along the right of way, so the guys would charge it, charge the stumps, and blow the stumps. It was much cheaper in the long run to blow a stump up and have the bulldozer work for a couple of hours yeah. trying to get a stump out. So, and that was about, and then we went and set chokers and then second loaded. And then we get pissed off with uh, Comox and we quit and go work for Copper Canyon. <laughs> so we worked for Copper Canyon and get pissed off with them and we go back to Comox. So, and we, there was always a lot of work and then we eventually sometimes would go work at Chimanga's Mill.